This year's winner of the Notre Dame Club of St. Joseph Valley Newt Rockney Scholar Athlete Award is a two-year walk-on member of the team. In two seasons, he has played in 28 games with a career high of five points. A finance major in the Mendoza College of Business, he has a 3.1 grade point average. From Los Gatos, California, please welcome our 2013 Rockney Scholar Athlete recipient, junior guard Patrick Crawley. Tonight I'm presenting Outstanding Playmaker. Um, when I think of an outstanding playmaker, it's somebody that can get other people's shots, can get shots for themselves, and get everybody involved on the team. Um, they don't only do it vocally, they also do it with, with their actions. Um, this guy, he actually led the team in assists, led the team in scoring. Uh, he was the second team, all Big East team uh, guy. And uh, against Louisville, you saw him hitting numerous big shots to put us in overtime to win, to win an epic five overtime game. Uh, the recipient of Outstanding Playmaker, Jaron Grant. Next award of the night goes to this year's you know, most improved player. And um, you know, as you think about the basketball awards that we'll give out tonight and that we've given out over the last couple of years at our banquet, um, I'm not sure there's an award that our coaching staff is more proud of than the most improved player award. Uh, we coaches were down at the Final Four last weekend in Atlanta, and it always amazes us, to me, the people that come up to you and, and respect your program um, and congratulate you on the year and the 25-win season. And, you know, one of the questions that they always ask, you know, especially to me and, and the assistants is, um, you know, how do you guys keep doing it when you, know, you have a key guy go down with an injury? You know, you lost Heron Gody a couple of years ago. Uh, you lose Abramitis last year, and, and Scott Martin goes down with a knee injury this year, and you try to reinvent yourself. You know, I think it goes back to, you know, Coach Bray and, and keeping guys confident and being positive with them. And it goes back to skill development. You know, I think the one thing that we're most proud of in our program is guys get better from their freshman year to their sophomore year to their junior year. And whenever their number is called, you know, they're ready to step up and deliver. And there's no question that the recipient tonight delivered for us in a big way this year. Um, we played in 28 games, uh, started the last 16 games of the year, and in those 16 games he averaged 8.5 points per game and 5 rebounds. In those 16 games he had 6 double figure scoring nights and he had a career high 18 points and 9 rebounds. Uh, in our Big East tournament semi or quarterfinal victory over Rutgers. So uh, we're excited he's coming back next year. We expect bigger and better things out of him next year. Uh, and this year's most improved player, uh, wearing a lovely uh, V-neck sweater down here, Tom Knight. One of the uh, greatest myths in the game of basketball today is that, you know, you have to be a great basketball, a great athlete to be a great defensive player. You know, while athleticism is important to, to be su a successful defensive stopper, I really think there's really like two areas that really constitute to make up a really, really good defensive player. One is upstairs with your head to be a smart guy, to understand concepts, what the coaches are getting you, what the strengths and weaknesses of the people that you're going against. And the other thing is inside, deep, you know, having the desire and the heart to really stop somebody, to keep them in front, to be in position to challenge every shot. The winner of the Defensive Player of the Year really embodies all those qualities, along with being a tremendous all-around athlete. In his senior year in high school, he carried his team to a state championship, which was the first in the history of their school. And he's brought those winning qualities here to our program as well. He's routine, routinely asked to guard the best offensive player on the opposing team, and he always meets that challenge head on and is ready to compete. His, his impact sometimes is not displayed in total defensive statistics, but we know as a team that we have a great chance to win his individual battle because he's ready to compete on every single possession. And a defensive possession is always finished, as we know as coaches and as players, with a defense, big defensive rebound. I'm not sure we've had a better defensive rebounder for his size, really, in our tenure here at Notre Dame. The bottom line is the young man is a winner in every sense of the word. As a starter in our lineup the last two years, we're 39 and 14, winning 74% of our games. He's a very unselfish guy on both ends of the court, and guys really love playing with him. He's a great teammate and enjoy to be around on a daily basis, and I'm not sure there's a more respected guy in our locker room 
for how he conducts himself both on and off the court. We're really encouraged how he ended his season, especially his play in New York in the Big East tournament, making the all-tournament team in the Big East, in the Big East tournament. The, hopes, the hope is that he'll take the mantle from our upperclassmen who are leaving this season to be one of the leaders moving forward as we embark on the new challenge going to the ACC. So it gives me great pleasure to, to announce the winner of the Defensive Player of the Year this season from Arlington, Mass. and St. John's Prep, Pat Connaughton. Good evening, everyone. Uh, great to see all of you here tonight. Um, this year's Captain's Award uh, recipient is a young man that averaged over 11 points a game, he was second in assists on our team this year, and shot 45% from beyond the three-point arc. As we know, this captain's award in any successful organization is not about just the stats or the numbers that I presented earlier. The leadership position in this program over the years since Coach Bray's been here has been extremely important. This year and going forward is a young man that will receive this award tonight and he's not a senior, so he will have an opportunity to achieve this award for a second consecutive year if he's in this position again next year. The leadership role has been such a major part since Coach Bray's been here. This opportunity doesn't come around much for young people, but to be labeled and named the Captain's Award recipient, to be a leader in a team or organization in a program at the University of Notre Dame is so special. And certainly it's my pleasure tonight to announce the recipient for this year's Captain's Award to Eric Atkins. Thank you, Coach. I'm very proud this evening to be here on behalf of our 7,500 active living members of the Monogram Club who have participated in athletics here at Notre Dame as a student athlete, as a manager, as a trainer, or as a cheerleader. It's a very elite group. What's even more elite is the fact that there are 230 living varsity basketball monogram winners. That's quite a, a small amount of people that have risen to that level and that can say that they played here at Notre Dame in varsity men's basketball. I'm also here on behalf of our board of directors and our incoming president, Haley Scott DiMaria, and our executive director, Beth Hunter. Our Most Valuable Player Award winner, if, if I was going to uh, give him a nickname, it would be Mr. Double Double. Uh, he's an individual who this year, I believe, had 10 double doubles in Big East competition, was an all Big East recipient, uh, was an honorable mention All-American. He participated in 97 victories over his four-year career at Notre Dame, an all-time high. And those are all very impressive things. And I don't get to vote on this award, but if I did, the single thing that would have turned me in his favor would have been what I saw here when we beat Louisville in five overtimes. And you might say, well, this person didn't really have a very good game against Louisville. In fact, he fouled out before the end of regulation. But as a former student athlete, you kind of watch strange things. And I watched this individual's reaction after he fouled out. And I will tell you that I saw no one who showed more leadership, as Coach Solomon mentioned, than Jack Cooley. He was on the bench. He was like a little boy jumping up and down. And he was as much in the game as any of the individuals who, uh, who were actually playing in the game at that time. There are 35,000 people now that are saying they were here for all five overtimes. <laughs> we all know that wasn't true. My wife and I were here till the bitter end, till they played the alma mater. Uh, and I will tell you that it's a great pleasure for me and a great honor for me to present the most viable player for the 2012-2013 Irish to Jack Cooley. <laughs> 